Today I'm going to take a look at this uh, mini PC that's been sent to me from Nipogi. Nipogi? Not sure how you uh, pronounce the name. Uh, this is the AK1 Pro, just checking my notes here. Uh, so this has Windows 11 Pro on it apparently. Uh, we'll check that out in a minute along with the specs and I'll, I'll give you a quick overview of the thing. Um, the reason why I accepted it for review is that I thought it looked quite stylish with this kind of um, copper. Let me show it to the overhead camera. There we go. We've got this kind of copper grill underneath the top. And also because it appeared to be modular, uh, which I was quite interested in. And indeed, it does have this module for putting a two and a half inch SATA drive in, which could be very useful for some people. Anyway, let's take a look at it and uh, I'll give you my thoughts. I'm just gonna remove that sticker. So it's quite a, a neat design. Let's take this module off for a second. Uh, so here's what comes in the box with the unit, and it does include uh, this bracket. Uh, let's take it out of the packet. So this has uh, visa mounting options, So and there's a couple of uh, screws here for that. So you'd mount this to the back of your monitor or your TV, and then you can see it's got these bosses, which will just go straight into the back of the mini PC. And it sits there on the back of your TV or your monitor, nice and neat, out of the way, out of sight. Quite like that. Uh, obviously that's going to be important if you're going to use this as a, as a media center. Uh, you've got the power button here on one side along with three USB ports. So those would be five gigabits per second. Uh, and then we've got some USB 2 ports as well. There's one here and one on the rear. The other options we've got is power input and the power supply is included. Let's check how long this cable is. Yeah, so what have we got there? About a meter. Uh, they've supplied a little uh, HDMI lead as well. And you'll notice there are two HDMI ports on the back of this device. There's gigabit ethernet as well, and then what appears to be a three and a half mil headphone jack. So quite a neat little device. What you'll notice on the underside of the device, here in the corner, there is a USB type C port. And that is used to connect up this additional module, which takes a two and a half inch SATA drive. And it just snaps onto the back there, and then you've got these two locking sliders to hold that in place two screws to undo the trap door to put the drive on the inside. So if you're running a media center and you wanna have a, a big storage drive full of all of your, your movies and that kind of thing, that's quite a neat solution. Same thing to hang it off the back, it's just slightly thicker. Or if, it's, uh, if you're using it on the desk, there's rubber feet. That's quite neat. I do feel it's a bit of a shame though that they've put that USB-C port there on the bottom and it's not usable in any way. And there's no pass-through, so there's no USB-C port on this base either. Once you've got this either on the desk, you won't be able to access the port. And if you're hanging it off the back of uh, your TV, you won't be able to plug anything into that port. So it's an interesting design, but I, I feel it kind of falls flat. Uh, let's check out the specs. And they are printed on a sticker on the bottom of the device, but um, I'm getting old, I can't see it. Uh, I've got to that point in life where I got to buy a magnifying glass. Uh, anyway, the specs of this thing, it's got 16 gigs of RAM in here, apparently, uh, which is the maximum that you would be able to put in because of the processor, which is a Celeron N5105. Uh, that was released in 21. Yeah, so it's over two years old at this point, that particular chip. It's a four core, four thread CPU that runs at 10 watts. It's not a particularly powerful chip, as I, I'm sure we're gonna find out when we do some some benchmarks later just for a bit of fun. It's also got uh, Intel UHD graphics, so I, I don't imagine this is gonna be any use for gaming or anything like that. But it will run the monitors at uh, 4K 60. And obviously, if it's gonna be of any use as a media player, it needs to be able to play back 4K video, so we will test that as well. So it's got a 512 gig storage device in there. I expect it's eMMC storage. It'll be the slowest, cheapest type because of the price of the unit. Uh, which I believe is about 180 pounds, but we'll put up the exact prices at time of editing. There are links in the description to these on Amazon. We earn a small commission off of those uh, if you want to buy anything on Amazon and you use those links. That uh, helps the channel. And I should say at this point as well, full disclosure, we were sent this uh, review sample without charge. We don't have to return it. They don't get to see this review before it goes live. They don't get to make any changes or anything like that. So we're free to give you our unbiased opinion. And I think in order to do that, we need to fire this bad boy up and get it set up. I'm curious to see how much bloatware there is on this. Okay, so we're all set up here, a bit of a spaghetti junction. Um, I'm using this uh, portable uh, USB-C monitor. It actually has a, an HDMI input as well, but uh, I'm charging it up with one of these power cables, so it looks worse than it is. I'm taking HDMI out from the mini PC into a screen recorder, and then that's looped back to the monitor. Hopefully all of this works, and that means that we'll be able to 
uh, record everything that happens on screen onto the screen recorder here. So let me just set that going. The last one of these that I tried to set up was absolutely full of Chinese software, really weird stuff. So um, I'm hoping this one isn't. Okay, so we've got the standard Windows setup screen. So United Kingdom, this is all straightforward Windows setup. Let me rattle through this. Okay, so it rebooted a couple times and we're now at the point where we can uh, sign into the device. So I'm actually gonna put my personal account on here, my Windows account, and see if it works. So what was interesting there is during the Windows sign up process, it didn't actually ask me to log into my Microsoft account. It's created a local user account by default. I wonder why they've set it up like that. Anyway, now we're on the part where Windows says this might take a few minutes. You've got no idea how long this takes, so just have to sit and wait. Something that I noticed during the setup process is that it didn't actually ask me for a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, obviously, we haven't plugged the network in, so at the moment it's not connected to the network in any way. I'm pretty sure this box does have Wi-Fi. It'd be a bit crazy for it not to have that. So I've set up our local user account and it's just busy finalizing those settings now. And we're into a Microsoft desktop. It is indeed Windows 11. Whether it's Windows 11 Pro, we'll find that out in a moment. That was actually pretty rapid. Under five minutes there from switching it on to getting to this point. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just have a look at what apps are installed. Just make sure there isn't any kind of uh, cheeky spyware on here before I get started. And I have to say, it looks completely vanilla. It looks like a, a plain Windows install. So we'll just go into the About page to find out some more information and check that what we've got inside matches the specs, uh, which it does appear to. So we've got a Celeron N5105 running at two gigahertz, 16 gigs of RAM, of which a tiny amount has been reserved for the Intel UHD graphics. It's a 64-bit version of Windows, and it is, in fact, Windows 11 Pro. So I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing here. So I'm gonna connect it up to a wireless network so that we can download some tools and assess the performance of this uh, little mini PC. And now we're connected up to the network, we're seeing um, some of the apps that are preloaded on this machine. I say preloaded, I don't think they're actually installed yet, but you've got things like WhatsApp, Spotify, TikTok, ESPN, ClipChamp, all the usual stuff. I'm not gonna install any of those, I'll just completely ignore them. I think the first thing that I'd like to do is find out how fast the internal storage is. So for that, I'm gonna download Crystal Disk Mark. So looking at Crystal Disk Info, the drive inside this unit is actually a SATA 600 SSD, uh, which is interesting, with a total capacity of 512 gigabytes. And looking at the test, the results are coming in, we're looking at 543 megabytes per second on read and about 483 megabytes per second on write. And I have to say, actually, that's a really good performance. I know there are much faster SSDs out there, but once you get up to these kind of 500 megabytes a second speeds, really you don't notice a difference. And it's not likely to throttle like a much faster SSD would. So I'd expect fairly consistent performance out of that. I'd have to do a bit more testing. Uh, something I have noticed is that there is a fan in the unit. It's uh, chucking out some hot air just on the right-hand side of the unit as I look at it. And I can hear the fan from here, so I'm, what, a foot away? If it was tucked away behind a monitor in a busy office, you'd never hear it. Uh, behind your TV, likewise, you'd just never hear it. And I have to say as well, installing these two apps, so far, the system feels pretty snappy. I think what we need to do now is maybe download a couple of benchmarking applications to get a sense of what the performance is like from this Celeron chip. I've got to be honest, uh, my expectations are not high, but let's give it a go. So I'm gonna download Geekbench 6. That should be fairly easy for us to be able to figure out how it compares to other devices and we can get a basic uh, GPU assessment as well from that. And just for laughs, I'm gonna download Cinebench as well. Why not? So we've got Cinebench R23 as a zip file. So let's see how long it takes to extract from that zip. And that's usually a good test of CPU. Obviously we don't have a comparison point, but that seems like it's going fairly quick. I'm not sat here thinking, oh no, that's gonna take far too long to finish. And just moving windows around and generally the responsiveness of the system is really good. I'm quite surprised actually. Having said all of that, this is quite slow now. I mean, it is unzipping a, a fairly large zip file here. I'll take back everything I said, this is painful. 
I think we've gotten accustomed to the power and performance that's available now from small devices and low power devices, thanks to Apple Silicon. Uh, let's run the Geekbench setup first of all. Okay, so Geekbench has uh, properly identified the CPU that's in there and the memory. Uh, it does say, well, so this has a base frequency of two gigahertz, this Celeron chip, it can boost up to almost 2.7 gigahertz. Uh, let's run the CPU benchmark and I'll be interested to see how much the fans uh, ramp up during this test. Okay, so we're just over two minutes into the test and you can see from the progress bar, we're not getting very far very fast. So we're just gonna pause the cameras so we don't accumulate gigabytes and gigabytes of video data and we'll switch back on when the test is finished. Wow, the only other time I've seen Geekbench test take so long is when I was testing another mini PC um, that I got sent and it was just so unbelievably slow, that particular one that I didn't even bother reviewing it. Uh, this one has scored. 343 for single core and 929 for multi-core. However, Geekbench 6 has been updated with more modern workloads, things that you'd expect AI to do, so object removal in images, that kind of thing. And of course, the chip that's in this mini PC, being as it was Q1 2021 release date, and not particularly new tech at that point either, is just not gonna handle those kind of workloads very well. So this result is probably not actually indicative of the performance that we would get in everyday tasks. So it's possibly a little bit unfair. So take that with a pinch of salt. Let's look up this particular CPU as well in the Geekbench 5 tables, and we'll put the score up on the screen so that uh, if you're familiar with Geekbench 5 scoring, that gives you a point of reference as well. Let's just for fun, let's, let's run the GPU compute test as well in uh, Geekbench 6. The Geekbench GPU benchmark is not a particularly intensive benchmark and usually it completes very quickly. Not on this machine though. Just whilst this uh, GPU benchmark is running, we're about just coming up to three and a half minutes in and it's about halfway through. Uh, an update on the fan noise. Neither myself nor Ben, my son, who's sat behind the camera, notice any major increase in the fan noise during the benchmark, but he can hear it from where he's sat, which is a good three meters away. I do have to say though, this is a very quiet studio and I just put a dB meter right next to it and it's at about 26 dBc. I, I suspect in most environments, you really wouldn't be bothered by the fan noise. Okay, so the GPU benchmark has finished and we've got an OpenCL score of 2,956, which is what I would call adequate graphics for everyday computing, but certainly you're not gonna be using this device for any serious gaming or anything like that. Uh, so what I think I would like to try now is the Cinebench benchmark. And it was a bit of a laugh really to download that but I actually think it might be a more valid result than Geekbench 6. Cinebench is a CPU rendering test, so we'll get an idea of how good the CPU is at doing that. That might be a more indicative score of the general performance of this machine. And I think once we've done that, I'd like to also download Microsoft Office and maybe just load up a complex spreadsheet and see how snappy the device is. First, let's get the Cinebench test running. So we'll accept the terms and we'll start a multi-core test. Mmm, that is not quick. Well, I've just got back from a, a nice lunch and I've got myself a, a lovely hot coffee here. And in the meantime, our mini PC has been completing the render of this image in Cinebench R23. And it's uh, managed a score of 1,205 points. Now that is a very low score, but let's be fair to the type of device we're considering here. This is a sub 200 pound PC. So we, we need to be reasonable in our expectations. And it's not really designed to be doing 3D rendering or heavy duty multi-threaded applications. So let's instead test it in a couple of applications that we think it might be used for. So I'm gonna start with Microsoft Office. So I'm just uh, running around one of my spreadsheets that's got a lot of data in it and just seeing how quickly things move about on the screen, how quickly graphs are drawn and that kind of thing. And I've got to say, it is pretty snappy. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this. Obviously I'm gonna to have to blur out bits of the screen because there's private data in this spreadsheet, but hopefully you get the, the idea, you can see what's going on. I'd be perfectly happy using this as a, as a work machine to edit Excel spreadsheets based on this. Let's just uh, try launching another app. 
that's pretty rapid, isn't it? So this is perhaps yet another reminder of why benchmarks are only part of our purchasing decision when we're looking at equipment. Because this actually seems to be a really responsive machine and it's working fine with all of the Office apps. So if you were going to use this in an office environment or as a meeting room PC, I think it would be perfectly adequate for the job. Now the other main usage for something like this would be to have it as a media center for your TV. So I think a fair test of this would be to go and hook it up to the 4K TV in my office and we'll watch some YouTube 4K content and just check that it's able to play that without dropping too many frames. So as you can see here, when we first plugged in the mini PC into the television, it was running at 4K resolution, but only at 30 Hertz or 30 frames per second. I had to go into the display settings to change it to 60 frames per second. And I have to say that once I did that, it didn't feel quite as snappy as it had done when I was working on the 1080p resolution. Things actually felt pretty sluggish, but I think part of that was due to some network issues. Uh, we ran a speed test here and we were getting very low download speeds. Uh, I actually did the same test on my MacBook Pro, sat on the sofa just in front of the television, and you can see I was getting significantly higher download rates. Now in this building, we have a Ubiquiti Enterprise mesh network, and there is actually an access point in the room in which we were in, uh, no more than four meters away Way from this PC, so it was a bit disappointing that that download speed dropped off so much. Especially when you consider that we're using the same access point here in the studio, a good 10 to 15 meters away and through a wall. So perhaps there was something going on in the background with the mini PC, maybe it was downloading an update or something. But we did eventually get a YouTube stream playing at 4K 60 frames per second, and as you can see, apart from the initial buffering, uh, it didn't drop any frames at all. It was playing back perfectly smoothly. Now we have been commenting on fan noise throughout the video and something we did notice was that when we plugged it in behind the TV, the fan had uh, either ramped up a bit more or it had developed a bit of a buzz. That might just be a, a one-off, but we could certainly hear it over the air conditioner in the ceiling. Uh, so your mileage may vary on that. Uh, we need to draw some conclusions and the conclusions absolutely have to factor in the price point. This is a, a sub 200 pounds PC. Uh, what are you getting for your money? Well, 16 gigabytes of RAM for starters, which uh, even Apple don't put in their entry level machines. And a 512 gigabyte SSD, that's a pretty healthy amount of storage. And of course you can expand the storage by getting a two and a half inch drive and putting it in this expansion module. Now, yes, you are getting a Celeron processor that's uh, not the most current. It's not gonna handle modern workloads, AI, machine learning, things like that. You're not gonna be able to do video editing or serious creative work with a device like this. But the CPU does have enough performance to run the Microsoft Office apps to give you a, a reasonable work machine. Uh, it would be excellent in a meeting room. In fact, I might actually attach this to the back of the TV in mine and Pete's office. And it would be quite useful to have something like this for when we're having meetings and we want to just share information. And the CPU is clearly good enough to stream 4K content. So if you wanna use it as a home media server, it's a good solution for that, especially with this expansion port. Of course, there are lots of mini PCs out there with similar specs at a similar price point, but not all of them have this expansion module for additional storage, and I think that's a really nice add-on. And the whole unit is very neat. It goes together well. I like the way it mounts to the back of a TV or a monitor. And don't forget as well, on top of all of this, you're getting a license for Windows 11 Pro, and I think that's really good value for something that costs less than 200 pounds. And this is a usable PC. For most people, they could do their normal work day on this thing. Now, I think there are things that could have been done better. This expansion module, as good as it is, is a little bit disappointing in the, the way that USB-C port is and the fact that you can't use it. It would have been nice to have a USB-C port on the device itself, even if it was running at five gigabits. I'm not entirely convinced you need two HDMI ports, so you could have sacrificed one of those for some better I.O. Overall though, it's a decent looking little thing at a decent price point. If you're in the market for a mini PC, this is a mini PC and it does the job. It might be something that you're interested in having a look at. I hope you found this video interesting today. Uh, if you've got any thoughts to share, please do so in the comments section. Please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell. Thanks for all your support as always. See you next time for some more geekery.